Hello and welcome everyone. Today CA have released the patch notes 1.12.1. These patch notes follow the release of the newest DLC, The Silence and the Fury, and they look into solving some of the issues created from this update. A lot of these problems included broken chariots, AOE spells that were overperforming, and many, many other issues. So without further ado, let's see what CA have put in for change from this most recent patch update. So Ben Barrett and the crew have worked very hard here to allow it to go live today and these updates should be automatic for you through Steam. Now a lot of things they have fixed which are bugs should improve your gameplay experience here for the single and multiplayer. In addition they are developing a beta patch which is currently out as well which should fix some major balancing here for cavalry. Now a lot of people have complained about cavalry not being as strong as it used to be and it's certainly getting pushed over here by great weapons. So hopefully here we can see some improvement from the cavalry and hopefully we should get both together closer to the end of the year. Now for the general changes here we can see fixed issues with collision models on chariots. Now this is huge. Now it was causing them to be overpowered and we can specifically talk here about orc ball chariots and more importantly tusk or chariots. Now being that their collision models were very very small it made them very very strong. It allowed models to overlap themselves and also allowed them to push through infantry a lot easier. Now what are collision models? Now collision models are very different to the physical models. The physical models are what you see here on the game and the collision models are actually what are impacted in games. So being there's going to be some altercations there means we're more than likely going to see some improvements on the gameplay. So other things that were changed were era of effect spells. They no longer affect units outside of their range. Now this is really, really important. Spells like Soul Stealer made Dark Elves really, really powerful. Now being that it's just going to be in that 40 meter radius, because before we have seen it where it's been as far as 60 meters before, can really, really balance out certain factions and also bring back some other winds of magic that we haven't seen outside of area of effect. So fixed issues where entities moving, such as wizards casting spells, can cause multiple casts. Now this is another awesome fix where you could see casters moving and casting multiple fireballs in one go or any other spells like fireballs. So any magic missile spells now will only be able to be cast once and only fire one spell. While previously I've seen up to four, even five spells going off in one go that all five of them do damage and have massively affected the game. So this change is yet again also huge. Looks like this also when mods have been given, it looks like it's going to no longer crash on load. So it looks like that's going to be more of a single player sort of idea. But the other three are going to be huge for multiplayer. These are some big changes. And if they do work correctly, it should really, really balance the multiplayer scene. So moving in with just the Beastmen, it looks like Kazrak and Morgan no longer re-emerge after their death. That happens to be probably for single player. Um, I don't think there was any issues on death animations here for multiplayer. Uh, fixed a bug where Kazrak could not see, uh, could not use his abilities when mounted on a Tusk or chariot. That'd be nice if Tuskles have been fixed, means you can have a cheaper chariot that also has his abilities as well. So that's a nice improvement. And Kazrak now gives Razical Chariot Vanguard deployment. Now I haven't tried to see if this is multiplayer yet, but if that's just single player, that's awesome. But if it's multiplayer as well, that could be really, really game changing. Kazrak is probably one of the weak current legendary lords here for the beastmen so that's quite a nice improvement for him torox it looks like for the majority here it is going to be just for single player it's actually entirely just for single player as far as i can see yep so all of this is single player so no real changes here for multiplayer and uh, for general let's have a look it looks like tusk or chariot mounted heroes now count towards the hero cap so this is a really nice change so when you did go into those quick battles you could see four heroes with two tusk or chariots um, as they don't count towards that hero cap. So now that's been changed, that's a nice little improvement there. So for Lizardmen, uh, Oxyotl is entirely going to be single player, and so is Nikai. It looks like there are some changes though, so made improvements for the Coatl melee animations. Now this is really, really nice. Um, the Coatl was already competitive, I saw people using it, I saw people having lots and lots of fun with it, which is really awesome because it's such a cool unit, but being there's going to be some melee animation changes means it could be some great improvement maybe against infantry or maybe up against single entity monsters. Either or is going to be awesome and it'd be nice to see what's going to come forward in the future. Uh, fixed bugs where the Skink Oracle on the Troglodon was firing a double volley. Ooh, so this is a big, big change, and the reason being is the Troglodon being able to fire twice, its damage output per second was so strong. 
the normal troglodons here without the skink oracle are pretty fair balanced, but you don't really see them at all. Well, the Troglodon was seen because it had great spells with Earth Blood as well as Fireball. It also had Flock of Dooms. It had some really nice spells that you could bring, and also even including Harmonic Convergence. So it had a great variety of awesome spells, and its damage output was just exceptional. Now, being it's going to go down to a single volley, um, you could probably see it die here from the community, unfortunately. For the majority, it would grab its value, and it was one of those guarantees that would, because it had 120 meters of range, which was pretty strong. It was fast, and it was a massive dinosaur towards the end of the game, which also did some nice work. However, with it being single fire, I think you could see it drop off here a little bit, because um, even then, it wasn't that, it wasn't 100% picked. It wasn't always picked in every matchup. It definitely had weaknesses, but being now that that is going to go away, its weaknesses will more than likely overcome its pros. So, and it looks like here, Temple of the Old Ones Ritual, that's just going to be for single player. So, yep, some really nice changes here. Uh, be interesting to see. Not too much. I think just a balancing on the Troglodon. And the Troglodon was abused a few times. So, I think seeing it balanced is nice. But, unfortunately, it could kill it from the multiplayer. But we'll have to see as it goes forwards. Uh, fixed issues where Grom's final battles, that's just going to be single player for the Greenskins. Of course, those Orc Ball Chariots will be fixed. And, obviously, Grom as well. Vampire Counts. And it's like White King button from the Hero Recruitment UI. That is just for single player and looks like single player as well. So it looks like for the majority here, we're going to be seeing just the changes at the top. So there's going to be some changes to Quattles as well as also some of the heroes. And it's like the majority of changes here are going to be for the chariots, which is really nice. AoE spells and also some fixes here to magic missiles. Now that is perfect. That's all exactly what we wanted. And it also looks like there's going to be a little bit of a mod here for the Cavalry Beta. Now, on this current release, unfortunately, it's not going to have all of the extras that you get from this normal update. So AoE spells and chariots haven't been fixed on this, but you do see some changes in the beta for the Cavalry. So let's have a little look here. So it looks like it's going to improve the effectiveness of Cavalry across the board. Now, that's what a lot of people have been wanting, and they've especially been underperforming of Heavy Cavalry. Uh, because it looks like they've been countercharged by infantry, and that's especially been exacerbated here when they have a lot of armor piercing. So, uh, several battle gameplay interactions have changed to address the issue that heavy cavalry are suffering from. Uh, this issue itself stemmed from the interaction between infantry countercharging cavalry due to the number of entities in an infantry unit, outnumbering cavalry entities, more attacks were being received on the cavalry than were being put out by... A... Yeah, okay, yep, so that makes complete sense. So being the fact that they were getting countercharged by more models, they were taking more damage, and the arm piercing was invariably the same, and actually the uh, the charge animation here from the cavalry was not always beneficial. Now, of course, there were ways that you could make it beneficial here for the cavalry, but there were a lot of instances where you should be seeing a benefit where you weren't always seeing some, so it was a little bit unpredictable, as it were. Uh, this led cavalry to actually trading very poorly against countercharged infantry, especially infantry with high armor piercing weapon strength, as we said. Uh, this is not intentional, so we looked into some tweaks, some interactions, to reduce the damage infantry can do in this situation. Uh, make sure that the cavalry impact felt as strong as you would expect. Yeah, because cavalry in history has always been very, very strong, utilized a lot, and when you normally have a ginormous heavily armored horse running at you, uh, it's never fun. So uh, the two majority changes have been implemented to resolve this. But due to the nature of changing core game systems, we decided the beta patch was the only safe way to ensure players aren't negatively impacted. Yes, yeah, so this is really smart. I like this. We're going to put out something out. We're going to let you guys try it as a beta. And if it goes really, really well and we get some really great feedback, then we'll look to implement it permanently. Because the thing is, is there's a massive relationship between infantry and cavalry, and it's a massive balancing act. If you make one too powerful, you lose the other, and vice versa. So some of the changes... So entities will no longer counter charge if their charge block is by friendly entities. So it looks like only the front line is going to be able to get that charge, uh, charge animation. So it looks like here if you're going to be charging infantry into cavalry or cavalry into infantry, it looks like here uh, the, the remainders behind are not going to get that charge bonus. Uh, this particularly affects infantry versus cavalry as the counter charge. That makes complete sense. This means that when the infantry unit charges into cavalry, the back ranks no longer get the charge. Yeah, so that seems absolutely acceptable, and that seems that seems perfectly plausible. Uh, this reduces the damage dealt by infantry when the counter charging as few entities get an immediate attack and charge. This will help with cavalry trade more favorably than with infantry. Yeah, that makes complete sense, and I can see that being very beneficial here in the multiplayer scene. 
uh, the calculation for collision damage has been changed. And this is something really important. And collision damage and collision uh, model size has also been something that needs to be altered here because it is super, super important here in the current meta as you can see that for example the changes in that collision size and collision damage has been affected on chariots you know faction wide so it's something that's really important and it's nice to see the ca have taken a position on this to look into it in more detail so previously collision damage was increased by the charge bonus of a unit which meant that a high charge bonus cavalry would have little da difference in collision damage between braced and unbraced infantry this meant that bracing often didn't make a big difference for collision damage, so it would nearly always be better for infantry to countercharge. This has always been the case. The only ones that would really see any benefit from bracing was probably Darwi, because they had enough heavy uh, model count there, or at least they had enough mass that uh, bracing was actually beneficial. Now, collision damage is just a calculation using collision power and not adding the flat charge bonus. This essentially means that charging into braced infantry will result in much lower damage on impact than braced infantry. Yep, so hopefully they can change some of the calculations here where if you're actually braced, you uh, do less damage from charging cavalry. And then actually, if you're going to be charging back, you actually do more damage as cavalry. Because if you're going to be running at a horse and all horses running at you, that force impact is going to be much greater. But if you're braced and you're ready and you're going to be using your environment there to your advantage, you should hopefully be able to outwit the cavalry. These two changes reinforce our intentions of how cavalry and infantry should interact. And I think that's the correct way about doing this. It's, it's not just simply about altering or making cavalry more powerful or making infantry less powerful. It's about looking about in the interaction between infantry and cavalry. That's where it's important. And that's how we're going to... I think that's the most important thing looking forward for cavalry in the future. Cavalry should be favoured in fights against counter-charging infantry, of course. Yeah, uh, the relative strengths of the units will still be important. And this is this is the most important point, I think. What you need to be able to see is where units have their biggest, most relative strengths is where they should be their strongest. At the moment, we're seeing a lot of units used in certain ways that actually shouldn't be their strengths. You know, for example, great weapon infantry has been used to counter cavalry. Well, we have halberds for that. Halberds normally destroy in all history, halberds are very good up against cavalry, but they're not being used because, you know, great weapons are performing better because they just have better armor piercing. So braced infantry should receive less damage than countercharged infantry. So there is a benefit to bracing infantry against cavalry. So I like this idea because this is this is very realistic and it makes complete sense and it's, it's a good way of balancing both sides so for example if you're just if you're not focusing on a unit and you haven't had it braced and ready for the cavalry then a good cavalry charge should be able to just break apart that unit as they're not going to be steady themselves and they're not going to be ready for that impact now for the nitty gritty details first some terminology and calculation specific so we could get into this a little bit more but for anybody that does want to go through these and do some of the calculations themselves please feel free but as you can see there is going to be some calculation changes that should hopefully help all units of cavalry and infantry interactions now do we need to go them in general we'll go through them very briefly so it looks like here collision damage has been changed it looks like collision power collision damage normalizer so like there's going to be some changes here collision damage is 70 percent armor piercing okay so it looks like there's just going to be some changes in regards to armor piercing and collision damage so it looks like there's some collision power, bracing, knocking down. Okay, this looks interesting. So knocking down the game has a random delay for how long entities will stay on the ground before getting up following a knockdown. Now that changing could also be huge. So for example, if you do knock down opponents, it means you could actually mean there's less counter charging on the way you're leaving. So one of the issues is, is you would charge in with cavalry, you get the initial hit, and then also you get hit on the way out when you're leaving with your cavalry. Now, if you do knock down more of the infantry, it means you're not gonna get counter hit on the way out as well. Uh, let's have bracing here. When infantry is standing still and facing the enemy, they would get a bracing multiplier. That's really nice. And that would be based on their mass. Okay. So I like this a lot. So heavily massed infantry, that is braced is going to perform very very well here against cavalry which actually should benefit some of the infantry that is actually based specifically to do with other cavalry so we could be seeing some halberd changes here 
which would which would be really nice. It would be nice to see some more halberds back in the multiplayer scene. A braced entity can have a significant improved mass, reducing to the collision power and damage considerably. So I'm sure here we can look at some of the new data coming out. We can look at some of these multipliers and we can see actually, is it going to be benefiting and have, have the correct calculations gone in, into place? These changes themselves as follows. The check for entities in front of others before charging means that the infantry units get fewer charge attacks when in the counter charging. Yep, perfectly makes sense. Our testing quantifies this is a reduction of around 35% less attacks, which means less damage dealt to the, by the infantry on the charge. So this means there's going to be about a less than 35% output of damage from great weapon units on charging against cavalry which means when cavalry goes in they'll be you know a lot safer and getting more damage and getting out and receiving a lot less which would be really really important and it means we should see some better cavalry play and cavalry a little bit more often as well uh, we have tweaked the collision damage calculation formula to have a bigger delta for damage possible okay so difference in range of damage output and increase the amount of damage per collision power however charge bonus is no longer added to the collision power as it was reducing the impact of bracing on the collision power. So it's like collision damage normalizer has increased from 0.7 to 0.8. Damage, uh, sorry, collision damage modifier reduced from 0.6 to 0.5. Charge bonus is no longer added to collision power. So it looks like here there's going to be lots of changes. Um, and it looks like here Ben Barrett and the team have really gone through and they've really looked in detail between the interactions between heavy armoured cavalry and then infantry with lots and lots of armour piercing. So the knockdown, the knockdown getting up random delays have been increased as cavalry would often not have a window to disengage, clearly as infantry would get up in the cavalry units and disrupt the disengaging cycle. Yes, yeah, so you could see a lot of times, especially if you hit on the flank. So there's normally a multiplier here. So if you do get recharged, if you get any sort of recharge, you go down to 30% of your melee defense. So if you do have 100 melee defense, you'll go down to only 30 melee defense if you get hit from behind. And it's 60% if you get hit from the flank, which means you go down to 60 melee defense. Now, when you take these into consideration, and that also does depend here on your vigor as well. So if your vigor just go down to the lower stage, you actually also go down to 90% of your maximum melee defense as well. So that's also to take into consideration. So furthermore here, I've seen a lot of cavalry charge from the side actually get caught up in a few units that haven't been pushed over. And I've actually seen better trades here if you don't directly charge from the front or from the back. Some side charges or charges at certain angles have actually really not been beneficial here for cavalry. And actually pulling out through, other, through your own infantry has actually been more beneficial so for example let's say we are playing bretonia we've got a cheap front line here of peasant mobs we can then charge our expensive infantry through our own peasant mobs into the other infantry and then pull out through our own peasant mobs therefore the peasant mobs are actually taking some of the damage on the leave rather than our cavalry now this would mean that you don't have to 100 take infantry to take some of that blow it means your cavalry can get in and out and actually not take some damage so bracing multipliers have been increased to further improve the power of balancing against collision damage. The goal was to increase the difference between bracing and counter charging in terms of how much collision damage is dealt. So it looks like here, brace units get their maximum bracing bonus at eight ranks deep. So it was previously six. So it looks like the entire unit is gonna brace better if it is braced. Uh, maximum bracing multiplier for mass ranks was changed from 3.5 to four, so it's gone up and charged defenders have had their bracing multipliers increase from 1.75 to 2. So it's like bracing in general has gone up exponentially, which is really good, which means actually you're gonna see a lot more players here looking to brace against infantry, uh, sorry, against cavalry as infantry, and we're gonna be seeing a, a, a lot of different gameplay here if this does come into the meta. So as mentioned, these changes are now in the beta. If you'd like to play them, give them feedback. So what you can do is you can pop that into Steam. You can actually up, you can actually put on the beta. It will put it on for you and you'll be able to give it a go and test it for yourself. So there's a little way of here of how to do it. It does actually tell you and perhaps I'll do a little video or on my, uh, on my Discord there, I'll be able to leave a link where I'll put some pictures for you guys so you can uh, see how to do it for yourself. But yeah, so guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, we've gone through all of the changes and, and I'm really excited for this. Um, the cavalry beta is only gonna be specific to the beta. So all of the normal changes here coming out of the patch notes for the 1.12.1, they actually won't exist on there. You'll actually have to only download the beta to get these benefits or at least see how these have changed the game. 
Uh, I think for the majority here currently, the beta does not have any of the patch notes uh, changes. So you're not going to be seeing any changes here to the uh, chariots, AOE spells, or the nice magic missiles. Uh, they're only going to be specific there to the patch notes that have already been done for you. So hopefully in the future, I think uh, CA haven't put anything out yet, but I'm sure we'll be seeing both of these get put together where we have the beta, which also has those bonuses. So when that does come out, I'm sure for myself, I will be testing. I'll be able to let you guys know what I think. And I'm really nice to see what you guys are thinking as well. If any of you have downloaded the beta, please feel free to go down into the, into that uh, comment section and, and just leave something for me to know uh, what you guys currently think. Is bracing really good? Is cavalry looking a bit strong? Is it still infantry favored? Uh, what are you all thinking? And also, what's your current thought on these changes? Are they actually necessary? Uh, there's arguments on both sides, but I really, really like what they're doing here. They're not just improving or or nerfing infantry or cavalry. They're actually looking at the way they interact, which is really, really important. And it seems to be they're doing the same here with the rest. So they're going to be looking at the interactions as well for collision models here on chariots, which is, is really, really awesome to see. You can see the CA are really taking multiplayer scene uh, properly and they're looking to improve it to the way that we can all get the most benefit and enjoyment from our gameplay experience. This will also really help improve the single player experience as well as to be able to use cavalry like pure cavalry as well. So some really nice changes to come forward. This is going to be lots of multiplication here for you guys to do. So uh, I'll let you guys do that. And if you do see anything important, do feel free to also drop that down in the description or come onto my Discord and we, we have a little section there where you can chat about all of the things that have changed here in the multiplayer scene. But other than that, I've been your boy Logic. Um, if you did like this video, please smash that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Of course, drop a comment down below. If you are new here, feel free to subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And in the description, you can find my Discord and all my other social medias. Now, I'd appreciate it if you do join my Discord. You'll be able to see all of my single player, multiplayer, leagues, and tournaments. And you'll be able to leave all of your replays for casting. So do go on there, check it all out. And if it's not the place for you, feel free to leave as well. But please do go check that out. But yep, I've been your boy Logic. Take care of yourself during these times, and I'll see you all very very, very soon. Take care.